In this video, we're going to talk about hypothesis tests um, on the mean when the standard deviation of population is unknown. And uh, standard deviation of population, if you remember, it's uh, the sigma. And we're going to talk about this type of test in this section. Uh, so uh, this discussion will lead us to talk about T distribution uh, and uh, what is the relationship between T distribution and standard normal distribution which basically leads us to talk about t-test as opposed to z-test which uh, we have been talking about so far in hypothesis testing uh, we'll be able to understand t-distribution and compute probabilities associated with that and perform uh, hypothesis tests on the population mean when the population standard deviation or sigma is unknown using the three methods that we already talked about critical region p-value and confidence interval. To recap what we talked about so far, we talked about these three methods of making decisions about any hypothesis test. And those uh, three methods uh, are true for any hypothesis testing, including the uh, t-test that we're going to talk about today. And uh, keep that in mind that these three methods, uh, all of them should yield the same conclusion. So uh, there are just different methods of uh, making conclusions about the hypothesis testing. So if the standard deviation is unknown and we're testing on population mean, which is the mu, uh, two situations can happen. If your sample size or n is greater than 30, then uh, based on the central limit theorem, uh, we, can we can still use the z-test that we talked about. The only thing is that we no longer have the sigma. What we can do is we replace sigma with S or sample standard deviation. Well, there is a difference between sigma, which was the population of standard deviation, and sample standard deviation, which is S. In any hypothesis testing, you essentially collect uh, data and uh, using that data to make a decision. E what we're saying here is that we can calculate the uh, standard deviation of that sample, that data set that you collected, and uh, replace it with sigma to uh, do the z-test. But if the sample size is less than or equal to 30, then central limit theorem is really no help and we've got to do the t-test. And we'll talk about t-test today. But uh, why do we even worry about when sample size is less than 30. Why don't we just increase our sample size and do the z-test? Well, that can uh, be a problem. Increasing a sample size is not always possible. Sometimes you have limited access to data. Uh, sometimes testing and sampling is destructive. Uh, for example, if you are testing on uh, strength of material or a certain part under pressure, to collect data, you would have to put that item uh, under pressure and measure the strength when it breaks. So essentially to collect each uh, data point you would have to destroy a part. So that's a destructive testing and is also expensive. So you might want to go with sample size of less than 30. So uh, these uh, reasons may lead you to have a sample size of less than 30 and in that case if the standard deviation is unknown then you would have to do the t-test. And let me tell you that in practice, a lot of time, uh, standard deviation of population or sigma is unknown because uh, we don't have access to the entire population. And uh, sigma at that point is essentially a, an estimate, uh, which may not be uh, accurate and uh, therefore not available. So you would have to do the t-test. But what is a t-test? Uh, t-test is very similar to z-test. When standard deviation is unknown n less than 30, uh, what we do is we formulate the hypothesis test based on the parameters that we have, the unknown population mean and your hypothesized mean, and we use the sample average or x-bar to estimate mu. And uh, as you can see here, the test statistic is very uh, similar to the z-test statistic. Uh, with the exception here instead of uh, 
sigma, we have S or uh, sample standard deviation. And we call this uh, test statistic T score. So uh, we call it T-score t naught because if the null hypothesis is true, then the random variable uh, T-score has a T distribution with N minus 1 degrees of freedom. And uh, we'll talk about this T distribution, what is the degree of freedom in the next video.